Now let's talk to lawyer Inebehe Afiong. This latest development is coming barely one year after courts nationwide was short as a result of the COVID-19 lockdown. Is there a way you think this could have been averted? Thank you for having me. I believe strongly that the ongoing nationwide industrial action by the Judicial Staff Union could have been averted if the government at all levels, particularly the federal and state governments, had acted timely and had also had complied with existing laws on the matter. But unfortunately, since 2014, when Justice Adeni Yademola of the Federal High Court delivered judgment in a suit filed by the Jusun against the Attorney General of the Federation, affirming the financial autonomy of the judiciary. Governors in particular have failed and refused to comply with the requirements and the prescriptions of sections 81, section 121, and section 167 of the constitution, which has prescribed the mode and the manner by which monies in the federation accounts and in the consolidated revenue fund of the federation and that of the state should be disbursed to the judiciary. Those funds are supposed to go to the National Judicial Council for disbursement to heads of courts. But we have a situation today where judges, chief judges across the country, depend on the goodwill of governors, only collect piecemeal, peanuts, monthly, what they call subvention, subvention to enable them carry out basic capital and recurrent expenditure. Indeed, Mr. Effion, the of the let me just jump in very quickly uh, to have your opinion. Are you concerned about what appears to be a multiplicity of industrial action? As we speak, some doctors are on strike, polytechnic teachers are on strike. Is there a sense to which you are concerned that all of these are happening at once? I am very concerned as a Nigerian. What, what that shows you is that Currently, the government doesn't seem to be in control of the, of the situation of affairs in the country. You have the judiciary on strike. You have doctors on strike. Now you have a section of the academic world on strike. Our polytechnic lecturers have also gone on strike. The president is outside the country. The vice president has not been empowered to act. So who is going to call these persons to talk to them? Who are they going to listen to? When the judiciary is on strike, what that does is that citizens are denied access to justice. People will now begin to resort to self-help. This could have been avoided, but unfortunately today, it does appear that there is no commitment on the part of the governors and of course on the part of the president to address these industrial actions by various unions in the country. But I'm particularly worried because the judiciary in particular has suffered a lot from the COVID, the pandemic that led to closure of courts the vandalism of the judiciary in Lagos State, and of course other challenges that the judiciary has faced. So this is the last time that the judiciary is supposed to witness an industrial action. But of course, I understand why the strike has been called. We have a situation today where many courts in this country are not functioning. Judges are still writing with long hands. They don't have stereographers. Our system has not been digitalized. Look at what happened in Lagos courts. When the Lagos judiciary was burned down, the Lagos cannot even retrieve files today. Many cases that had gone in, on in court for years, no traces of those cases because of lack of infrastructure or poor infrastructure. In some other states in the country, the situation is worse. Magistrates are sitting in the dilapidated buildings. So what you are seeing is a deliberate attempt to, you know, allow the judiciary to collapse. Well, yeah. it it never be F young. We have to no end it here. To this issue. Thank you so much for your contribution.